G'day guys, my name's Dave and welcome to another Guitar Zero to Hero song tutorial. In this lesson, I'm gonna teach you how to play Angie by the Rolling Stones. Now in this lesson, I'm gonna teach you a few different ways of playing that verse, starting with the easiest possible way of playing it, and then I'll teach you some more difficult versions of the verse that includes some of those licks and fills that you hear Keith Richards playing. I'll also teach you how to play a short solo before the final chorus, and this is based off a solo that Ronnie Wood plays in a live performance in Cuba. I'll leave a link to that video in the description below. Now for the basics of this song, you'll just need a guitar and standard tuning and you won't need a capo. If you want to master your chords back to front, then be sure to head over to guitarzerohero.com to pick up my free guitar ebook. Or if you want to improve any guitar in general, then sign up to Guitar Zero to Hero Premium, which is my complete step-by-step -step guitar course. All right, let's jump into the lesson. So before we get stuck into the intro and verse, the song starts off with a natural harmonic, which is easy to play. So we'll take any one of our fingers, I use my ring finger here, and you place it on the fifth string above the fret strip dividing 12th and 13th frets. So we're not pushing the string down, we're just lightly touching the string. And when you pluck it, you'll get that nice natural harmonic. So that's how the song starts off. So we get into the intro and verse. Now I'm gonna start by teaching you the easiest possible way of playing this intro slash verse. I think it's really important to understand that the intro in the verse of this song isn't just a jumble of notes all strung together. All those riffs and licks are based off a chord progression and once you understand that chord progression, it all falls into place a lot easier. So let's start with that chord progression. So we're gonna start with an A minor chord and we're gonna strum this with a down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, up. But what we can do on the highlighted down strum, so the down strum on the three beat, we can put our pinky finger on the third fret of the first string. And you'll just place that pinky finger on that first string just momentarily for that, for that single strum. So down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, up. Then we go to an E major chord and an E7. So the E7 will take our pinky finger and put it on the third fret of the second string. Now, these two chords share one strumming pattern. So we're gonna play a down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, 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 up. And on that three beat, that's where we change to that E7. So it will sound like this. Down, 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 up. One other optional thing you can do with this E is on that second down strum, you can hammer your index finger back into place. So down, hammer, and then finish the rest of the strumming pattern. So this is optional, but it would sound like this. So that's the first line of chords, which sound like this. For the second line of chords, we start with the G sus4. So we have our ring finger on the third fret of the sixth string, middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string, and index finger on the first fret of the second string. So this is a G sus4. And you can actually have your first string muted here. And you can just do that by lightly touching it with your index finger as it's fretting down that first fret. So we have a G sus4 and then an F sus4. So from this shape, you'll move your ring and pinky finger down to the third frets of the fourth and third string. And your index finger will remain where it is. So we're just focusing on these three strings here. So that's F sus4, and then we'll go down to an F. So with your middle finger, have it ready here on the second fret of the third string. So F sus4, and we'll lift your pinky, and then we're on an F. So for these three chords, it's contained within one bar and one strumming pattern. We're gonna strum this G sus4 four, four times. One, two, three, four and then go F sus4, F, and then end with a down up on the F. So one and two and three and four and. Now for the final bar, there's five chords here. So there's a lot of changes going on, and this is probably the trickiest part of this verse, but it sounds really cool. So we're gonna stay on our F chord from our previous bar. We're gonna strum that once and then play an F sus2. So you can lift your middle finger and that's now an F sus2. We play the same three strings and then we're gonna play a C slash B. So keep your index finger where it is. Middle finger comes up to the second fret of the fifth string. We're gonna focus on the middle four strings here. And then we're gonna to go to a C chord. 
So those first four chords are strummed once each. So one and two and. Now after we hit that C chord and we let it ring out for a little bit, on the end beat after the three, we're gonna continue on with a down, up, down, up, down, up strumming pattern to finish the bar. And on the end beat after the four, we go back down to the C slash B from the C. So down, up, down, up, down, up. And the bar in total. And the second line of chords in total. Three, four, and one, and We put that all together and this is the easiest possible way of playing the intro slash verse. So that's the easiest way of playing the verse. Now before the choruses, there is a slight change to that chord progression. Instead of going from our C to C slash B at the very end, we're just gonna stay on our C. So that's one little thing to note. Okay, so now that we've got the easiest possible way of playing the intro and verse out of the way, let's actually learn a more complicated version of the intro, which is more true to the studio recording. This is not 100% note for note, but it's a hybrid of the actual studio recording and how Keith Richards plays it live. So for our first bar we have our E minor and we're going to be playing it essentially for the same strumming pattern in the simple version. So down, 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 up, down, up, 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 down, up. Now on that three beat you do want to get that pinky finger on the third fret of the first string just momentarily for that strum. So down. So that A minor part is fairly simple. Then for our next bar, which is based around that E, we're going to get into this position. So you're gonna have your index finger here on the third fret of the second string and ring finger on the fourth fret of the third string. We're gonna hit the open sixth string and then you'll go third string, second, first, third, fourth, and so far, one. Then with your free middle finger, fourth fret of the sixth string, and then you'll strike the top three strings after that. And then to finish this bar, we're just gonna finish with a down, down, up on the higher strings. So the bar in total, one, and the first line of tab in total. For our second line of tab, we go to a G sus4, so it's played like this, ring and pinky finger on the fifth frets of the fourth and third string, and your index finger will bar across the third frets of the first and second string. We'll start with that fourth string, hold it out for a quarter note, and then we'll go third, second, first, second, third, and end with the fourth string. All the suggested strumming and picking directions are shown below the tab. They're just my suggestions, of course you don't have to follow them, but I think they're the most economic and easy to play. And so far, one, two, and uh. Then you're gonna slide this exact shape down two frets. So now this is an F sus four. We're going to strike those three strings and then go down to our F. So just lift your pinky finger and middle finger on the second fret of the third string. So three and four. On the end beat, we'll do a quick down up strum on this F. And that's it for the third bar, which sounds like this. For the final bar, we'll stay on this F, but we'll lift our middle finger and you'll strike those three strings and hammer on your middle finger into place. And then lift it and strike those three strings again. So that's F sus two. And then we'll go to our C slash B. So middle finger on the second fret of the fifth string. Keep your index finger where it is. And you'll just focus on hitting the fifth and fourth strings here. And then we'll go to a C chord. So ring finger then moves up to that third fret of the fifth string. So the first four plucks here. Now we hold that out until 
the last part of this bar, which is a little bit tricky. So with the C chord, keep your middle finger lifted so it's a C sus2. You're going to start with the down stroke on the bass note and then an up stroke on the fourth string. Then put your middle finger down onto the C chord, pluck that second fret with the down stroke and then an up stroke on the third string. So down, up, down, up. And then we go down to our C slash B and then you'll pluck the fifth string and up on the fourth string. So it's a constant down, up, down, up motion with your picking hand. And the bar in title. And that's it for the more complicated intro, which sounds like this. And a little bit faster. Okay, so that's the intro, and you could actually use that for the verse as well, but I'm gonna give you a couple of more options that you can use throughout the verses to mix things up and make it a little more interesting. So for the first verse variation, we're going to start with our A again. We're just gonna strum our A minor chord and strum it two more times on the beat. So one, and two, and three. Now those second two strums, you can just focus on some of the higher strings and really just keep it a bit light. So one, and two, and three. And then we get our first lick here. So you're gonna take your ring and pinky finger up to the fifth frets of the first and second string. You're going to strike them three times. Now I do this with a down, up, down, but you can do a down, down, down for this lick if you wanted to as well. Down, up, down. And then we bar the index finger across the third frets of the first and second strings. Hit that with an up stroke and then come down with your ring and pinky finger on the fifth frets of the third and second string. So down, up, down, up, down. You could do that all with down strokes as well. It's kind of up to you. And the bar in total. One, two, three. And then for our second bar, it's based around an E chord. So we're going to hit the open sixth string. And then we're going to play this shape here. So your next finger on the second fret of the fourth string, ring finger on the fourth fret of the third string, and middle finger on the third fret of the second string. And keep that first string open. Now on the two beat, we're going to strum this with a down, up, down, up, down. And then end with a down, down, up. So the second bar, one. Now ideally when you're playing this, you wanna to try to keep that fifth string muted as well. So you can do that by lightly touching that fifth string with your index finger as you're fretting down that second fret. Then we go to our G sus4. Now you don't have to bar the index finger here. You can just focus on that third fret of the second string. Ideally, if you can, reach your thumb over the top to hit that third fret of the sixth string as well. So if you can get that, start this bar off with that root note. But if you can't, just strum the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings, that's alright as well. But ideally hit that root note, and then we're going to strum the 4th, 3rd and 2nd strings twice. And then move down to a G chord. So lift your pinky finger and put your middle finger down on that 3rd string. So the first 4 plucks, 1 and 2 and... Then we shift down to a F sus4, hit that, and then down to a F and then end this bar with a quick down up on that F. So the third bar. And then the final bar is identical to what we learnt in the intro. So we've already learnt that. And we put that all together and this is verse variation one.
Okay, so that's verse variation one. Next, I'm gonna show you what we could use as a pre-chorus. Now, basically, it's just the same as our verse variation one, except we're not playing that lick at the end where we go back down to that C slash B. We're just gonna stay on the C and strum it with a down, down, down. So the final bar for this pre-chorus. And that would take us into the chorus. So that's what we could use as a pre-chorus, for example. Now let's take a look at verse variation two, which has a few different licks in that first line of tab. So we're gonna start with an A minor, so strumming that A minor. And then we're gonna play a lick that's similar to the other one, but, but the timing's different. So we're gonna start on the two beat and we're going to go down, up, down, up, down. And then down to that third fret with an up stroke and end with the fifth frets of the third and second string. So that starts on the two beat and it's a little longer than the other lick. Two we and the three we then. And then to end this bar, we go down to the fourth fret of the third string and back up to the fifth fret. So this first bar. So this second bar is based around E. So we're gonna start with our open sixth string. We're just gonna have our ring finger on the fourth fret, third string, middle finger on the third fret of the second string. And keep that first string open. So we're gonna strum these top three strings. Now you can also mute the fourth and third strings by lightly touching them with your index finger as you're fretting these other strings. Now don't push your index finger down, just lightly touch those strings so it mutes them. So we're gonna strum this with a down up, down up motion up into the three beat. So one E and a two E and a three E. And then slide it down one fret, strike that, and go back up with a down, down. So we're just temporarily moving down that shape one fret. So that's the second bar. Now everything else is identical to the verse variation one. So it's just that first line of tab that's different here. So verse variation two. So that's a second variation of the verse that you can use. Now it's important to understand that the chord progression is key here. The chord progression is the most important thing. You can make this as complicated or as simple as you want it. So you could use the easiest version of the verse that I taught you with just strumming, or you could use verse variation one, you could use verse variation two throughout the song. It's just really up to you and how you wanna mix it up. Each time you hear the Rolling Stones play this live, they will play it different every single time. And that's because they're sort of improvising around those chord shapes. So I've given you a couple of options there to use and at the playthrough at the end of the song, you'll see me cycle through a few of those variations. So that's probably the hardest part of the song out of the way. Next, we can get to the chorus, which is really simple. It's just two lines of chords. So we're gonna start with the G chord. Now, we're gonna be strumming all these chords with the nice and easy strumming pattern that goes down, down, up, down, up, down, up. And in succession, down, down, up, down, up, down, up, down, down, up, down, up, down, up. So you're gonna play that strumming pattern twice for the G chord. And then we're gonna to go to a D minor for one strumming pattern and A minor for one strumming pattern. For the second line of chords, we have C, one strumming pattern, then an F. I like to play my F like this actually, so I reach my thumb over the top to hit that first fret of the sixth string and have my ring and picky on the third frets of the fifth and fourth string, middle finger on the second fret of the third and index finger on the first fret of the second string. You can keep that first string muted if you want as well. So that's how I play my F. That's played for one strumming pattern, and then we go back to a G for two more strumming patterns. So that's the chorus, which just sounds like this. Now, if you want to mix things up a little bit, you can actually use a G add nine instead of the G. So we have ring on the fifth fret of the fourth, middle finger on the fourth fret of the third string, your next finger on the third fret of the second string, and pinky finger on the fifth fret of the first string. And this is what you'll see Keith Richards play for that G chord. I like using the open G as well. If you're playing this by yourself, it sounds a bit more full. Now, the only other rhythm part that we need to learn is the bridge, which is again, really, really simple. So we're going to 
stick with that same strumming pattern that we had in the chorus. And there's two lines of chords. So we have D minor for two strumming patterns and A minor for two strumming patterns. We're gonna repeat that line of chords through three times. And then the second line of chords is the same as the second line of chords of the chorus. So C, F, and G twice. So the bridge sounds like this. And I'm just gonna play that first line of chords through once, but you do need to play it through three times in the actual song. Okay, so now I'm gonna teach you a nice and easy guitar solo that you can play just before the final chorus. Now this is based off a solo that Ronnie Wood plays in an awesome live performance that I found on YouTube. I'll leave a link to it in the description below. So for the first lick, we're going to slide up to the ninth fret of our third string with our middle finger. So we'll slide up to that ninth fret and then we have four notes here. So up to the eighth fret of the second string, back to the ninth, and then back up to the eighth fret of the second string twice. So. And we're gonna hit that eighth fret one more time and hammer on to that 10th fret of the second string. So that's the first loop. This solo is basically just based off the minor pentatonic scale. The second pattern of it. There's a few extra notes in there that are outside the pentatonic, but for the most part, it's just in that pentatonic scale. For the next lick, we'll go 10th fret of the second string up to the eighth fret of the first, back to the 10th, back up to the eighth fret, 10th fret of the first string. And when you hit that 10th fret, you'll bend up and then release. So the second lick, that bend might be a little trickier to do on the acoustic guitar, but you can give it a go. For the next lick, we're gonna start with our pinky finger on the 11th fret of the first string. We're gonna hit that, pull off to the 10th, and then pull off to the 8th. So, like that. Now you wanna have your other fingers in place, ready to go, as you pull them off one by one. And then we go back up to the 10th fret, down to the 8th fret twice. So. And then two more notes, the 8th fret again, and then the 10th fret. So that's our next lick. For our next lick, it's just four notes. It's 10th fret twice, down to the eighth fret, and then 10th fret of the third string. So this next lick. With your ring finger here on the 10th fret, keep that there and we'll now bar our index finger across the eighth fret of the first and second string. We're then going to pluck the first, second, and third string with an up, up, down. And we're gonna do that three times. And then we're going to end with the first string and then with your middle finger, ninth fret of the third string. So all of that together. And from that first string pull off. and the solo in total. And that's it for a little solo that you can play before the final chorus. And that's everything you need to learn for this song. Again, the intro and the verse sounds a lot harder than it actually is. And the important thing to try to learn is that chord progression. And if you want to embellish it with some licks, then you can add some of that stuff that I showed you in the verse variations. Let's quickly talk about the structure of this song and how I will play it at the playthroughs at the end. For the more complicated version, this is how the structure is going to go. I'm going to start with the intro, then I'm going to play a verse variation one, pre-chorus, and then the chorus. And then I'll play a verse variation two, verse variation one, pre-chorus and chorus. I'll repeat those four sections again, and then I'll have verse variation two, pre-chorus, and that's where you can actually add that solo in as well. Then I'll have chorus, bridge, verse variation two, and then just the outro. For the simplified version, the structure will be more or less the same, but I'll just be using the simplified verse anywhere that there's a verse section. 
So now I'll be doing two playthroughs of the song. The first playthrough will be the more complicated version, including all the licks and the fills and the verse variations. And the second playthrough will be an easy strummed version if you're more of a beginner. A big thanks to my friend Eric for lending his awesome vocals to these playthroughs. Feel free to play these back as many times as you'd like to to practice, play along to, and see how you go.
Thanks so much for watching. If you've enjoyed this lesson, then I know you'll absolutely love these other lessons too. So hit the link here, or if you wanna grab a copy of my free guitar ebook, then head over to guitarzeritohero.com or click the link here. Thanks so much, and I'll see you guys next time on Guitar Zero to Hero. Cheers.